All right, in this video, we're going to do an example of inflation. Uh, so you can see this is the first example. We'll do some another example in, in the next video. Uh, let's get right to the example. Let's say we got a 40-year annuity due, has annual payments of $6,000. Assume a nominal interest rate of 8% compounded annually. So I've got an 8% annual effective interest rate as the nominal rate. And the, the part A is to determine the accumulated value of the annuity. So, so far, there's no th nothing that has to do with inflation on this particular, uh, up to now, there's nothing that has to do with inflation. There'll be a part B and C that uh, I bring in, uh, bring into account some inflation. But for right now, we're just calculating the accumulated value of this annuity due. It's got 40 payments of 6,000 at an 8% interest rate, annual effective interest rate. There's, uh, we, we don't need a timeline for any of this stuff. It's, uh, the accumulated value is going to be the 6,000 times S double dot angle 40 at 8%. Use your TVM buttons on the calculator and you'll get that uh, the, um, if I did this right, then our answer here is 1,678,686. Okay, so that's easy enough. So now let's let's tie in some inflation. So now part B, let's assume that uh, in addition to the previous information, let's assume that we have a 3% annual effective inflation rate. And now let's determine the accumulated value of the annuity using the real rate of return. And so uh, you got to have some direction on some of these problems. So this is just, um, uh, they're giving us the direction. Now instead of using the 8% uh, on the annuity calculation. We want to use the real rate of return. So we have to calculate what that real rate of return is. And remember, the relationship between the nominal rate, the inflation rate, and the real rate of return is given on the screen here. So plug in our numbers, 8% for I and 3% for R, and solving for I prime, we see that I prime is this 4.85% number. And so now the question is just to determine the accumulated value instead of using the 8% compounded annually, uh, an 8% AEIR use this 4.85% number. And uh, when I do this calculation on the TVM, I get 713,510. So, uh, so that's my answer. Now, let me explain to you where I'm coming up with this or what I have in mind when I came up with this example. I'm thinking along the lines of maybe having like a uh, a retirement account. You have these individual retirement accounts that uh, that you can put money into as long as you have earned income. You can put money into these retirement accounts. Uh, and so this uh, it, in 2020, I think the uh, amount that you're allowed to put into this IRA is six thousand dollars. And, and really, I'm thinking of there's some really valuable IRAs out there. One particular value, valuable IRA called a Roth IRA. A Roth IRA is one in which you put the $6,000, your, your contribution into the IRA is done um, uh, after taxes. So you pay the taxes on the $6,000 now, but all of your earnings will grow tax-free. So when you get that money, you'll, you, you won't pay taxes on that money. And so I'm thinking of, in this case, I got this 40-year annuity, so I'm thinking of maybe having a 25-year-old start their IRA uh, with payments of 6000 at the beginning of every year or starting on their 25th birthday. How much would you have on your 65th birthday or the day before, say, your 65th birthday? And at the 8%, if you were able to get an 8% annual effective interest rate as a return on those on those payments of 6000 into your IRA, you can see you'd have $1.6 million, over $1.6 million. But that's kind of a misleading number because that's a number that's 40 years from now. And so it's it's a little bit misleading that to say you're going to have the one, it, you will have the 1.67, 1, 1, 1.6 million plus, you'll have that money, but you're comparing apples to oranges in a way if you're thinking of that as being today's dollars because it's not. So a little bit better, um, a little bit uh, less misleading number would be the 733,510 number, and that was using the real rate of return. I personally don't really think that's a very good number either. Uh, we, did, we, we got the answer by doing what we were told to do, which is just to use the real rate of return to do the calculation. And that may happen on an actual exam. They just say, hey, here's a problem. Compute you know, this accumulated value or this present value using the real rate of return and you just do it. But in the example or in, in, in the, the idea or the, 
you know, what I'm thinking about here with with having a retirement account and and trying to figure out, well, you know, kind of how much is that worth today? Then I think an even better way to calculate a number for that would be to do this part C. So part C of this question is to determine the present value of the annuity by discounting the accumulated value that you got in part A for 40 years using the inflation rate that was in part B. So that's just a very easy question from, from module one. I'm going to take my answer in part A, the 1.678 million number, and, and just discount that for 40 years. So I multiply that by V to the 40th, where V is the annual discount factor using the inflation rate of 3%. And when I do that, I get this number of 514,600 and 13 so 514 613 i think is the better number to use that's how much you would have in today's dollars you'd have about half a million dollars in your uh, in today's dollars as far as buying power today you'd have about half a million dollars in that uh in that retirement account uh, uh 40 years from now uh, you'll technically have the 1.6 million number in it, but as far as what would it be like having today, it would be like having about uh, half a million dollars today. And again, if you if you put your money in one of these Roth IRAs, then that's going to be uh, tax-free money. So whenever you make a withdrawal from that, you're not paying any taxes on it. Those Roth IRAs are value, very valuable stuff. I encourage you to start contributing to them as soon as you can. Okay, uh, we'll see you in the next video.